What is wrong with young men? Right now in my country of Australia, we have a massive issue with young dudes. And I think that it echoes all over the world. These problems are everywhere with people who are yet to become men. Right now, I'm sure you're all very aware of the epidemic that faces young men. The mental health problems, feeling lost, not having ownership of anything. They feel without cause, without purpose, and masculinity is at an all time low. Now, that issue is so complex that it is impossible to cover in one video. And I have done many videos on this subject. But in today's video, I wanna focus on one faction in this group, and that is the wannabe gangsters, the violent thugs, the absolute grubs that exist in our youth. In every single part of Australia, it doesn't matter where you look, there is a problem with youth crime. Young men turning to violence for some unknown reason. Whether it's Kempsey in New South Wales or Moree, Townsville up in Queensland, Melbourne, the Kimberley, it doesn't matter where you turn, there are young men breaking the law, hurting people, and nobody can tell you why. On top of that, these young dudes don't seem to care, and what terrifies me more than anything is the age of these young men. These aren't boys just about to finish school. These are kids. These are babies doing this shit. Take this story for example. It was absolutely horrific. Five teenage boys arrested over the fatal stabbing of a grandmother, three 16 year olds and two 15 year olds. But it doesn't stop there, it gets younger. A Gold Coast teenager armed with a machete has been caught on camera trying to break into a car and then a house. The vision captured just before six this morning in Helensvale shows two teens jump out of an allegedly stolen car. Mate, look how old this kid is. This is fucking insane. He's wielding a machete. Mate, not to state the bleed and fucking obvious, but where are his parents? Where are mum and dad? There's no doubt that, in my mind anyway, that his mother and father are just like him. Two fucking little grubs. Kids as young as 10 are being locked up for serious crimes, but South Australia's Children's Commissioner says incarceration shouldn't occur until they're at least 14. Okay, sure. Maybe you don't lock up 10 year olds. Fair point. But what do you do? We have to do something with these kids who are breaking the law. And if you don't lock them up, what do you do? Do you give them a slap on the wrist and then they're out there doing that same shit the very next day? It's just gonna keep going until they're 18 years old and then you can finally put them in jail. And then that's gonna be the rest of their life until they die of a fucking drug overdose. A worrying display of teamwork. A young boy lifted up to a window as a gang of teens tries to rob a Windsor home. Okay, so the causes of all of this are very hard to pinpoint. Absolutely. And people love to blame a whole different range of things. They like to blame music and movies and TV and culture, but is that who we should blame for these young people committing violent acts? As much as you'd hate to admit it, the truth is it comes down to that young person's environment. It comes down to what he sees at home, what he's experienced since he was a baby. Everything, every little thing has molded him into the violent piece of shit that he is now becoming. And if we don't do something, that will be his entire existence. Because the chances are, if you're a shit person and your wife's a shit person or whoever you've impregnated is a shit person, your kids are gonna be shit. And then their kids are gonna be shit and it goes on and on and on forever. I have been receiving DMs and emails about a town in Australia called Townsville for years, about people terrified. They're too scared to leave their house at night because the youth crime is so bad there and no one is doing a thing. And what does the government do in Queensland? Well, they say there's nothing we can do about youth crime. That's actually what they said. I do acknowledge that there are um, uh, a number of young people out there causing considerable harm. Stopping short of calling it a crisis, but the Premier forced to address Queensland's youth crime problem. In Townsville, the issue they have there is mostly Indigenous kids. Aboriginal kids who are carrying on like fucking idiots. And I'm sorry if this is politically incorrect, but the elders in that area need to fucking sort that shit out. 
Sort the parents out. Do something. But it's not just indigenous kids. This is the crazy thing about this entire problem with youth crime. It is not one race, one group, one colour, nothing like that. This is every single ethnicity in this country. Black, white, brown, Asian, whatever. They have piece of shit kids representing them. And so we look at it and go, well, what the fuck? If it's not just one group, then how do we pinpoint the problem? What's happening in Townsville is probably the worst case in the country, without a doubt. I want the government to do something about what is going on in Townsville. I have never felt so scared in my life. I simply went to go Christmas shopping the other day. This car was stopping and starting in front of me and started ramming into the back of my lane cruiser. I had to run a red light over four lanes of traffic and they've continued to ram me in the driver's side and they took a weapon out and started smashing the back of the glass. They were ready to kill me. That is fucking insane. What are the police doing? Well, I guess the police officers there have this problem. They could go and arrest these kids, but then they get let out the next day. So really the police are doing nothing. It's not their fault. They have no power. And obviously the judicial system is doing nothing at all. These kids, maybe they go to juvenile detention. And then what happens there? They learn how to be bigger wankers. And then the recidivism rate just increases and increases. Then they go to jail, big boy jail. Then they just cement themselves as the assholes of society. In my state, New South Wales, just below Queensland, the, the government wanted to do something, but this was the response. Planned legal changes making it harder for some young people to get bail have been slammed in an open letter to the New South Wales Premier or Governor Chris Minns, signed by some of Australia's top legal and criminal experts. The letter's authors accused Mr Minns of ignoring years of evidence about how to reduce youth crime whilst failing to uphold his closing the gap commitments to reduce the number of First Nations children in custody. Well sorry, if you break the law you deserve to fucking go to jail. If you take something from someone, if you injure someone, you hurt someone, you scare someone, break into their house, do this shit, then you don't have freedoms. They get taken away. And the amount of kids that film this shit and put it on TikTok is mind boggling. It really is getting worse by the day here in this country. It is fucking outrageous. A gang of masked youths barefoot and carrying a large knife make their way down the side of Mina and Marcelo's home. Another three boys soon join them before the group forces their way inside. <laughs> Invading the family property at Kalinga as a second teen waits outside. <laughs> The woman barely speaks English. Frightened and confused, she's dragged through her own house. A group of young men have just broken in while he's sleeping. See a man wearing a black hoodie walking into a bedroom. He flashes the middle finger at the camera. You can see a walker parked next to the double bed. There's an old man sleeping on his own, and this scumbag creeps up to his bedside table looking for his car keys. Then he has a look inside the walker. So they're robbing him while he's asleep. A child walking free alongside his family, sentenced for his role in a violent home invasion that saw Wallaby star Totai Kefu, his wife and their two children, stabbed. Are you sorry about what happened? The teenager, who can't be identified for legal reasons, is among four boys who stole a car and drove to the ex-rugby player's Kuparu home in 2021. Drunk, he and another teen waited in a Hyundai while two of their friends, armed with a sickle and a knife, went inside. The court heard it was a planned attack. Locals say they're sick and tired of it, posting videos of the crimes being committed in their community. The state's north and central west have the highest levels of youth crime. Most common, theft with over 2,300 offences in 2022, followed by break and enter and intimidation or stalking. Now, it's very easy to complain about all this shit. What are we going to do about it? Other than buying my new book, it's on pre-sale right now, Better Man, which is a shameless plug, no doubt, but I also think it could help a lot of these kids if they could fucking read. Anyway, it really annoys me to see this shit. I see this out... Uh, in you know when I'm driving around or doing whatever in, in all parts of this country and the world, you see particularly young kids dressed like Eshes, carrying on. They've all got fucking bum bags with fucking little pocket knives in them, thinking they're hard. <laughs> You're not. You're just a fucking bit of sperm that should have been spat on the wall. So how do we fix it? Well, we fix it at the source. We have to. 
the parents. You're the problem. And there might be a few examples out there where parents are amazing and incredible and the kid's just caught up in the wrong crowd. Sure. But why is that crowd wrong? Well, it's being created by shit parents. So somewhere down the line, it's a parent's fault. Everything that happens in your child's life from the moment they are born up until the moment they become adults is on you. And the way that you treat them when they're babies, if you yell at them, if you smack them, if you won't pick them up when they're screaming, that affects them emotionally. And then that will affect them later on in life and they pass it down to their kids. It's all these crazy tiny little details that fucks people up. It's almost as if we need to consciously make that decision to be better as a wider community as well. And if we don't, if we don't bring these kids into the community, if we don't allow them to be a part of it, then they will burn that community down just to feel its warmth. That's what they'll do. That's what they're doing. Maybe it's the lack of religion here that is the issue. I'm not religious at all. But I feel like when we don't have something to belong to, we feel lost. And maybe that's what's happening with these kids. Maybe these kids need to be in jiu-jitsu schools. Or they need to be doing something in the gym, doing something, particularly with young dudes. They need to be doing something difficult, hard, almost violent, violently controlled. And I feel if they're not doing that, then they're out in the streets with fucking machetes breaking into people's houses. This isn't an indigenous problem. This isn't a Sudanese problem. This is a problem in every single family in this country and probably in your country as well. The real victims here, of course, are the people who are affected by the crimes. And if you refuse to redress these problems, sorry, Addy wanted to join us. Uh, he was crying at the door with Claire saying, get, let me in there. I need to talk to dad. Uh, if you don't address these problems, then these problems will only get worse. And that is what we are seeing. So what is the answer to this youth crime problem? It's on the parents. And if you're a shit parent, you're going to have shit kids. Addy agrees. And there's nothing you can do about that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is something that's ingrained in the society. Maybe it is music's fault. I want to know your opinion. Let me know in the comment section down below. But until next time, be a good mf -er. Peace in the Middle East. <laughs> Me, Willy stinks. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Toodaloo au revoir. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching this fantastic video by me. Now, ladies and gentlemen, some very important news. I am going on a world tour in 2024. If you are in the USA, the UK, Australia, or New Zealand, or any other part of the world, make sure you sign up for tickets at isaacbutterfield.com. And as soon as they become available, you will get an email. You'll be able to get them straight away, and you won't miss out. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. Once again, see you next time. Bye.